But I'm not going to watch the second half because the Premier League is boring. It's fundamentally boring. And we need to wake up to the fact that this is not the best league in the world. We've got a team that is going to win it for six times out of the last seven of that. I'm watching another game that at a pivotal moment at 1-0, Man City get given a free kick that's not a free kick and they score from it. And I'm tired of it. I'm bored of it. I'm bored of watching a league that is boring with officiating, which belongs on a local park. It's absolutely abhorrent. Fine. So that's a message to you, the Premier League and the PGMOL. You are destroying football in this country with your inefficient officiating and your inability to create a level playing field where one team is not boringly dominating this league year after year after year. So last night, my beloved City won 4-0 against a struggling Brighton side with KDB opening the scoring, then a quick fire brace from Foden to end the first half at 3-0 and then Alvarez to round off the scoring in the second half to make it 4-0 and put the game to bed. And well, everyone's favourite United fan was not very happy with this. Mark Goldbridge, as he does for most games, was doing, was doing a watch-along. He was doing a watch along of this game, um, as he does for most games, but he ended it um, at half time because it was a game that City had already won, uh, which is fair enough. At, at 3 0 up at half time, we should have definitely not be losing that game from there, and obviously we didn't. So, yes, we, we had already won the game. And yes, potentially it was a boring second half. I, I would agree. I, I didn't get to watch the first half because I, I was at the gym, but um, the second half. Um, started just as I went on to do my cardio so I, I watched it on on the stairmaster and on the treadmill so you know I was, I was able to watch second half and yes it wasn't it wasn't great but you know nevertheless but I find this point interesting and I find all the points that he made that I put at the start of the video very interesting because I see a lot of people agreeing with him but it doesn't really make much sense to me because city at city is second in the league right now Arsenal are obviously top Arsenal won 5-0 against Chelsea. They won 5-0 against Chelsea. A team which they drew 2-2 with earlier in the season. A team which have a long history against each other and usually, 9 times out of 10, play a very competitive fixture against each other. I, I, I think I'm correct in saying that, right? Well, they won 5-0. And they, they ran away with the game. They absolutely, completely ran away with that game. Chelsea did not have a hope in that game. It, as soon as Trossard scored, you knew the game was over. Probably the same as people uh, thought as soon as De Bruyne scored yesterday, the game was over. But how come Arsenal are allowed to win 5-0 to go top of the league? And that is fine. That That is completely fine. But for us to win 4-0 against Brighton, to, to go second, that that's a problem. That that's a problem, and with with Arsenal top of the league, yes, Man City have a game in hand. But with Arsenal top of the league, everyone's saying that the, the league is done and that Man City have won the league despite us not being top. And that game in hand is Spurs away, a fixture that we haven't won in the Premier League since I want to say twenty eighteen, uh, twenty yeah around about 2017, 2018 times, right? Um. That's a, that's a long, long time. Obviously, the only win we've got at Spurs' new stadium is in the FA Cup earlier this season. That's our game in hand. A game in hand isn't guaranteed three points. So Arsenal could definitely still win the league from here. Arsenal are very likely to, to win the league from here. Like City have not got the title. We don't have hold of the title in our hands right now. This is not our title. It's our title to lose, yes. But I still think there's a very much chance for Arsenal to win the league so I find it absurd that everybody's saying that the league is over already also I find it I find it funny how the the narrative for a lot of the season has been that this is the best title race ever that's what Twitter tells me that's what Sky Sports tells me that's what every other social media outlet has told me about this season that this is the best title race we've seen ever so how come the league's boring again and and City were always going to win the title was everyone just playing into a delusion that this is the best title race ever or have they just quickly changed their mind because city or city could win the title race and it's and it's a good title race until city win like this is this one I'm, I'm not really understanding from this narrative and i find it interesting and you, and you would have seen me put it up on screen that mark 
says that is boring, and City are making the league boring by winning a potential sixth league title out of the last seven. Which, fair enough, that is that is dominance. That is dominance in this period of time. That is dominance in Pep's era. He, that would be six out of eight for Pep Guardiola in his time in England, right? L Manchester United, the club that Mark Goldbridge supports, won 13 Premier League titles out of, out of the first 21. 13. And that's not a problem. That's not making the league boring, apparently. I I don't really get that. They won two in a row. And then Blackburn won the title. They won two in a row again. Then Arsenal won the title. They won three in a row. And then Arsenal won the title. They won the league. And then obviously Arsenal won, won it. And then Chelsea won two in a row. They won three in a row again. And then Chelsea won the league again. And then they won the league again. And then City won the league. And then United won the league. And they haven't won the league since. They won three in a row twice. And yes, if we win this title, we would be the first team to win it four times in a row. Fair enough. Okay, I, I, I can completely see that point. But 13 out of 21 titles is absurd. That is dominance. Just like what Pep is doing now is dominance. They are both dominance. So how come one's right and one's wrong? And yes, you can go in and say about how we financially doped, there's charges looming overhead. Okay, that's fine. We, we'll wait to see how those situations play out, whether we're found guilty or innocent. You know, but that, that, that can be a factor. That's fine. But United also spent a lot of money. You know, that, that's, that's not a secret. United also spent a lot of money and, and would buy some of the best players in the world to also compete or keep competing for the, for the Premier League. So, you know, it dominance is dominance at the end of the day. A league being fun, it usually means there isn't that much dominance. That's why I think the Serie A is potentially one of the most exciting leagues at the moment because Juventus's dominance come to an end and then we had Inter win the league, AC win the league, Napoli win the league, Inter win the league again. Like It's an exciting league over there it's, and it's definitely going back to, to what it used to be. But... You know, we, we, the league is competitive. Uh, and the league doesn't just have to be competitive at the top. That there, There's always different teams competing for Europe, um, whether that be the Conference League, the, the Champions League or the Europa League. There's always different teams competing for Europe. I think that's quite exciting. I think the, the race for European football is exciting. The relegation battle is, is also usually pretty exciting. Um, I think it's quite exciting this season as well. Obviously, people will make, make the argument that potentially all three of the new, newly promoted teams could go down and the same team that won the league last season might win the league again so this league basically means nothing but that doesn't take away from the title race nor does it take away from the relegation fight in my opinion um and i also find it funny that he, uh, mark will always bring up that we've got these charges over our head which is fair enough that is something we've got to deal with that's something the club's got to deal with and it's, it's going to be a stain on our reputation but Manchester United have been fined by UEFA for, yes, minor financial fair play breaches, minor, but they're breaches nonetheless. So they also cheated. And they're UEFA, they're UEFA, ones, they're UEFA ones as well. So they've cheated and not got any success from that in the Champions League in the period of time that th this happened. So, you know, if we're, if we're going to and point the finger at, at people for cheating, let's look at the one team in Manchester that has been found guilty of their financial fair play breaches. I'll happily entertain the conversation if and or when we're found guilty, but as of right now, one team's been alleged of breaking it and the other team has been found guilty of breaking it. Also, also, he'll also say that we should get a points deduction because we've been alleged of this. But Mark Goldridge's real team his real team, Nottingham Forest, have got a points deduction this season for breaking financial fair play. That that point doesn't really mean much. That that was just kind of a joke because I found it funny. But back 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 to the actual topic at hand. He'll also complain. Uh, he'll also sorry. He'll also claim again that the refs and the PGMOL favour Manchester City. Is a point that he makes all the time. It, whether you'll see a foul and it'll be, oh, if that was City, that's a penalty, or 
oh, of course that decision is not given because it's not Man City or it's against Man City. And I just think to myself, yes, Potent- there was potential for um, Brian to get a penalty yesterday. I think it's a bit of a clumsy challenge from Guardiola, but I don't think there's enough in it for for it to be a penalty. That being said, I wouldn't have complained if it was given as a penalty. I can see why it would have been a penalty, but I personally don't think it was a penalty. And yes, the free kick that we got for Foden's goal was soft. Okay, that's fine. Every team has decisions go um, their way and and go against them. Obviously, Mark wasn't complaining when, like I said, I made a video a few weeks ago about that uh, penalty that United got against Bournemouth. He wasn't complaining then about the referees, even though that decision was, I'd say, worse than the two that were made yesterday. But, you know, that's just my opinion at, at the end of the day. That's just my opinion on the referees. I, I've got a bit of a controversial opinion when it comes to a lot of these controver- uh, controversial VAR decisions. So, you know, may- maybe I'll do a video on them. Maybe I'll do a video on giving my opinion on all those because when I speak to people about it, I usually have a different opinion to them. So, you know, but yeah. And I know I've already made a video about Mark. Um, I can't actually remember the reason. I think it was literally just because he says that he's always talking about City and he's always bad mouthing City. And yes, I understand it because a lot of you pointed out in the comments of that video that it's biased. It's obviously biased and he's obviously going to hate City because they're, they're local rivals. And I completely understand that. But the level of bias and delusion he takes it to is, is, is an extreme that I haven't seen before. And the the obsession he has with talking about City is crazy because yes, I don't like United, I don't like Liverpool, but I will not spend my every waking hour tweeting about how much I hate them or how much this goes in their favour and this goes in their favour and, and this and that and this and that. So I do find it strange. I, I find him as one of the most interesting characters on on the football like social media youtube space so that's again why we're making another video with his name in the title why because it's, it's to do with a city game that was played yesterday i always make a video about city it's probably as beneficial to have his name in the title you know i couldn't think of a better title so bam will just throw mark in there get, might get me some more clicks but yeah uh that's all i've really got to say um Leave a comment down below what you thought of the uh, refereeing and VR decisions yesterday. And if you think Mark Goldberg is correct in what he said uh, yesterday after he ended his watch along of Manchester City Brighton. But if you did enjoy the video, please like the video. Um, subscribe to her channel if you haven't already. I know a lot of you that watch these videos aren't subscribed. So please subscribe to her channel. With um, Click the bell icon to be notified anytime I upload, which is usually 6pm every day or every other day. Uh, sometimes I take breaks depending on if it's a slow news day or not. Um, check out the rest of the videos on the channel if this is the first video of mine you're, you're watching. And yeah, I've been Nathan. I'll see you in the next one. Peace. Shut down cases, they belly dots to the car, see faces, chasing, chasing the bad guy, chase it. You don't wanna be the one like Ace and like GT, so I'm telling my basic. I tell about bitch, come break it, break it. Body come mad, come shake it, shake them. Get back to the basics, basics, bro, down, shut down cases. They belly dots to the car.